it, it helps if the little thing says live. It did though, right? Well, the now it does. Time. The second time, yeah, second time's a charm. So uh, as I was, it was I was brilliantly creative the first time we did this, but it wasn't live yet. So I'll hopefully be able to do it again. And welcome to the pre-show of the Practical Prayer podcast. Uh, we're going to be recording the podcast episode starting in a few minutes now. But uh, Carol and I are available. If you have a comment or a question or a thing that you want to share with us, you can put it up in the comments. And uh, we can say, hey, hey there, Wayne in Calgary. Yeah, Wayne. There's Early. Wayne. You've seen Wayne before. Time. There you go. And um, you were talking about organizing yourself with uh, uh, with neon colored post-its. And I found this. Yeah. Which yeah. I've had for a long time. It's my pad of neon colored post-its. Tied together with a regular package of post-its. So. Yes, I have the squares and the little ones, you know, color-coded, and you're supposed to write everything down. This is a lot that I have, so I yep. decided to color-code it better. Okay, makes sense. I have a whiteboard. I finally erased everything off of it because it was all six years old. <laughs> I used to... I by by is... six years in, I figured, I'm never going to do that. I used to have... I used to put my post-its on a wall um, in one office I had. And you sh it was just brilliant color. The whole thing was ridiculous. It, there was no way I was going to get to all that because I kept adding to it. And when we, <laughs> when we moved, I said, wait a minute, I'm not throwing away all these great ideas. I'm packing them all up. <laughs> <laughs> and I put them in like two shoe boxes full of these notes. And a friend of mine uh, agreed or or it said that they wanted to um, transcribe them or, you know, put them in all neat and everything. I said, mm -hmm. I probably won't do anything, so I just have to take the... So I pick out a note every now and then, and that's how it goes. Do you think it's still a good idea and then put it back in the shoebox? I actually, when I take it out of the shoebox, if it's a blog or something that I was supposed to do, now it's, on, it's online, so I can let the sticky go but you know what it's hard to let that sticky go even though when i've you know done what i'm supposed to do with it i gotta let it go yep i found when i put stickies on the wall i needed to tape them up because the sticky sticky would come off oh, and then okay. i wound up with a floor full of stickies here's <laughs> here's my inspiration oh. <laughs> yeah <laughs> sitting next to my computer <sighs> So we're going to talk about cause and effect today, which I'm really looking forward to because yes. that's one of the, the areas where new thought is so completely divergent uh, from uh, from other thought. <laughs> For lack well, of you know, term. I don't want to get in the meat of the conversation now because this is the pre part, right? Yeah. yeah. But I find this incredibly exciting. Okay. Yeah. Well, let's go ahead and start the podcast and. Uh, we will take questions and uh, and perhaps answers uh, afterwards. Uh, and so uh, uh, let me find the thing and we'll, we'll hang out. We'll have a time. Okay. A practical prayer is a prayer that works. These discussions between Reverend Bill Marcioni and Carol Lawrence dive into the details of how it works and how to work it. Reverend Bill is a New Thought Minister and the author of Practical Prayer for Real Results. Your new life begins with a new thought. Carol Lawrence is on a spiritual quest, finding the New Thought teaching after decades on the pulpit in three different traditional denominations. I've got some questions. Together, they're exploring the philosophy and activities that come together from many of the world's religions to create the practical spirituality that is New Thought. Practical Prayer Podcast. I'm Carol Lawrence here with Reverend Dr. Bill Marcioni. And today you want to talk about cause and effect. I do. I do. I Every time we pick a subject, I say, this is great. I love this subject. It's one of my favorites. And so, but this is one of them. So this is your one of your favorite favorites? Yes. Yes. Okay. Because it's freeing. Okay. Well, in the normal world around us, uh, people uh, understand cause and effect to be, uh, I want to move something. So the cause is I push on it, and the effect is that it moves. The cause is that I throw the rock, and the effect is that it hits somebody or something or rolls down the hill. 
So that's mm -hmm. cause and effect out here in the, the in the physical Newtonian world. And yeah. you figure that people think that that that's all that ever happens. And when we talk about it, it's different. It it is, and and it's so relevant because and. Let me just say the reason that the context in which I'm thinking, um, we are living right now, the, ex the experience that we have right now is the result or, or effect of some decision that was made, you know, maybe yesterday, maybe 10 years ago. Mm -hmm. But you don't think of it that way. And um, I'm trying to figure out how to phrase this without being negative in any way, because I don't want to slap any, anybody's belief system. You know, I don't want to do that, but you there's can leave a that to me. Okay, I'll leave that to you. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, the reality is that's exactly what's happening. And that means the responsibility for our life, broad, speaking in broad, uh, painting with a broad brush, of course, but the responsibility for our life is, is ours. Like there's no entity out there that you can beg and plead and hope will bring about the desired change or the desired effect that you want in your life. It just doesn't work that way. Right, if there's something that I, I think is beyond belief, I can't believe it's possibly gonna happen. There is no external entity that can make it happen. Exactly. Exactly. And um, that's a touchy thing, you know, because, it, I mean, the entity that we're talking about is God. I call God spirit. And people, I don't want us to, like, poo-poo what somebody believes about the activity of God in their life because you can't deny a person's experience. But after a while, you know, you look at the pattern and you see that, where you are right now is a result of past behavior and yeah. you know you keep doing the same thing you get the same result right and the I, I didn't give the new thought equivalent of cause and effect at the beginning when I described cause and effect which is where if I want something to move I push on it and that's the cause and then it actually moving is the effect mm -hmm. in new thought we understand that everything 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 starts in consciousness first cause was God creating everything and sharing its creative energy and power and law with its everything. And wherever consciousness shows up is the ability to activate that law again or some more. It's not again, it's a continuous kind of thing. So in New Thought thinking, the cause is the, the choice, the decision, the intention to have the thing move. The first effect is pushing on the thing. That is a result of our thinking, I wanna have that thing move. So the first thing that we do, the first effect is to push, the secondary effect is that the thing moves. But it's all done in consciousness. It all happens in consciousness. And that's really important because we are free to choose whatever it is we want. There is not some superseding consciousness that's gonna override what we want. It may give us something different than we said we wanted, but that's not because it's doing something other than what we wanted. It's because what we want and what we believe is possible are different. Because the law is always responding to our beliefs. When our, be when our beliefs are activated by our words, then there's a very clear focus for that creative power and it brings things into our experience in just spectacular ways. But there's nobody sitting in director's chair deciding what it is that we're gonna get. Exactly, exactly. When you say that it all starts in consciousness, could you use, say that another way? Uh, it, the consciousness, the mind, um, in, it's, it goes beyond intelligence. It's belief. So whatever it is that exists in my belief system, in my consciousness, is what's going to be showing up in my life. And I can change that. Usually it's in incremental steps. Sometimes it can be something transformational and, and amazing. Uh, there was a huge change in my life when I learned about the technique of creating a new experience using a practical prayer because I was suddenly able to get changes happening in my life instantaneously or really rapidly 
and amazing changes that would happen that I would not have had any reason to expect would happen. But I opened up the belief to the possibility that this could happen. And I set the intention that it would, that the experience was unfolding. I got my, what I call my small self out of the way and the creative power that knows how to create galaxies started creating stuff in my life. Mm -hmm. I mean, I think I've told the story before about uh, how it was that I moved back from Florida to Philadelphia. Uh, I got exiled. Um, it, <laughs> it was accidental. Uh, I was I was on the radio, and uh, I moved from Philly to South Carolina for a radio job. And six months later, it turned out that I needed a different radio job, and I got hired to go to Miami, Fort Lauderdale. So we moved down there, and the radio job lasted about a half a year, which had been a problem with me in the radio business up until then. Uh, so I switched into advertising and technology and marketing and 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 and. and. Um, and did other things while living in Florida, wanting to move back to the Philadelphia area, but not having the means, the mechanism, the job, whatever, to do that, and for all kinds of reasons. Wound up getting, I've had lots of jobs that were the best job of my life. Mm -hmm. And one of the best jobs of my life at that time uh, caused us to move from Fort Lauderdale to Tampa. And that's where I really found the New Thought Teaching, a very small spiritual community in Tampa, where I learned to do practical prayer, which at that point being a religious science international was called spiritual mind treatment. And set the intention that I really wanted to move back to Philadelphia with my family and to do so in a way that we're not going to go broke and we're going to be fully supported and there's going to be good work and all the rest of that. And the company that I moved to uh, Tampa to join had been a very small consulting company. And a couple of months before I joined them, uh, they'd been acquired by a large a nationwide uh, printing supplies company. And so went to work for them. And uh, they kept on changing around our mission, taking us from supporting publishing companies to supporting printing companies. And there was all sorts of noise about how, well, they might just roll this little group in Tampa up into one of the organizations that they had in a bigger city someplace. All of it was scuttlebutt. And we're thinking, okay, we've got family in Philadelphia. There's reasons to go. There's reasons not to go. Is this actually going to be okay for us? Are we going to be like jumping into a hornet's nest or something? There's a big national trade show that happened a couple of times, every couple of years. And they put our little group in Tampa in charge of the trade show presence. And the trade show happened to be at the Pennsylvania Convention Center in Philly. So I got sent up to Philly for two weeks to prep and run the trade show with a hotel room. So all I had to do was fly my wife and daughter up and we got a two week audition with a rental car <laughs> <laughs> to hang out in Philadelphia and see if it was gonna be okay. And it turns out, yeah, it is okay. Now, I was opening myself up to this possibility and we knew that a few months ahead of time that we were gonna be doing the trade show. Uh, and set the intention, okay, I, we're now ready to, to, to move to Philadelphia. I don't want to be doing something different in Central Florida. I'm open to that possibility. And the boss, who at that point was working in headquarters in Pensacola, New Jersey, uh, came in and made the announcement that they're closing the Tampa office. Everybody's getting fired except me and two other guys. Uh, they were remote working in the Northeast, and they wanted me to move and work at headquarters in Pensacola, New Jersey. Wow. Yeah. Wow. So a raise, a promotion, a move, all the expenses paid, and they started treating me like a king because they put me in charge of a thing. So is there any reason to believe that that could happen? No. Who, in the beginning, who, no. Who would script that? Okay. I want to get a job in Tampa so we can move to Tampa so the people in Tampa can move us so we can do a test drive in Philadelphia so that I can then get moved from... Tampa to Philly at somebody else's expense. And by the way, it was very convenient because for three months, I was the only person working in the office in Tampa. I had an awful lot of autonomy. I got used to it. <laughs> so when we talk about cause and effect, the cause was not me telling somebody to move me to Philly. The cause was not me finagling something. The cause was me getting to the point in consciousness, in my belief, that this was possible and to open myself to those possibilities and let go of everything that wasn't like it. That was the cause. And the effect was all of those things happening by seemingly sheer coincidence. 
Okay, number one. That's a lot. That's a whole lot in there. So well, that's a big to, story, yeah. Yeah, <laughs> so I'm going to try to pick out a couple of things. So how long did it take from Florida to Philly? We were in Tampa for one year. Mm-hmm. Um, the, the, the lease on the house was up in February, or the end of February of 97, and we had signed the lease in, sometime in February, and so we were out of there in a year. I had found the spiritual community where I learned this probably in the summer and learned to do the prayer techniques probably, I'm going to say, October, November time frame. So between October and February, all of this stuff happened. October and February, okay. And then you, you were in Philly by February. The trade show was in October. October, okay. So it was. So we were just starting to learn this stuff, and it's just starting to happen. And I think they closed down the office in uh, November, December. So a little bit of time, a little bit of time. That wasn't a huge amount of time, but a little bit of time there. But the key thing in your story in the beginning is that you believed it could happen. Um, I opened myself to the possibility that it could happen. And I, and I let go of any resistance that I had. And initially the resistance is, do we really want to move back to Philly where the family is and get ensnarled in all of the family stuff that had been going on previously? Um, do we really want to, you know, do this thing? And all that, the circumstances unfolded in such a way that there was a reassurance that the universe gave us the opportunity to say, yeah, this is going to be okay. So when you, you look at, first of all, we, we establish that what we do now affects later, or what we have done in the past is where we are now. But when you do it in a deliberate fashion, because it happens all the time, it happens whether we're aware of it or not. Mm-hmm. Okay, so once you become aware of it, let's say today I want to really start exercising this my understanding of cause and effect and I don't want it to be like what I would chalk up as coincidental anymore never was coincidental but I don't want to chalk it up that way anymore so I need to get to a place where I believe it can happen or you're saying that the the term that you used is um, uh, open to the possibility Mm -hmm. surrender to the disbelief let go of the disbelief yeah you know, when I, when I give you a scenario about something happening and your immediate reaction is, yeah, but that can't happen. The operative belief is, yeah, but that can't happen. So when we're opening to possibilities, if we say, here's this outlandish possibility, I say, well, that seems unlikely, but okay. <laughs> Rather than it's not going to happen or coming up with the reasons that it's not going to happen, that gives the infinite creative power that creates everything a lot of elbow room. Because when something starts to happen, we're not going to stop it. But it, it's also, when you're, when you're open to the possibilities, um, and you know I'm a nitpicker, right? Because mm-hmm. I'm like, <laughs> you're open to the possibility that spirit, or that this could happen in, in this universe that we're in. Why not? So you, you can choose, you know. Yeah. All the reason why it won't, but then I choose this. So when you're open to the possibility, I mean, I think that takes a little bit of energy so that you can catch the doubts and the fear and all of that right there in the beginning. You know, Absolutely. And- that's, that's huge. That is naysayers and the pivot. Let's take a break, and when we come back, we will talk about pivots and naysayers. Good. Learn to put practical prayer to work in your life. The steps are simple to learn and let you begin to get real results to create the life of your dreams immediately. Reverend Bill Marcioni's widely acclaimed book, Practical Prayer for Real Results, gives you a clear summary of the new thought principles behind practical prayer and the series of easy to understand steps found in the most effective prayers from religions and spiritual practices all over the world and throughout history. Practical prayer is not a replacement for your religion or practice. It's a technique to make the work you do in consciousness even more effective. The book includes 40 prayers on various topics that you can adapt as needed and use as your own. Practical Prayer for Real Results is available in paperback, Kindle, and audiobook on Amazon 
or at b-the-light.com. That's b-the-light.com. One more time. You need to unmute again. Welcome back to the Practical Prayer Podcast. I'm Carol Lawrence here with Reverend Dr. Bill Marcioni. We're going to continue this discussion on cause naysayers effect. and the pivot. Okay. Cause and effect. And yeah. those are not the same. <laughs> cause and effect are not the same as naysayers and the pivot. Those are two yeah. different ways of working at it. And the premise that we're going with is that in the physical Newtonian world of cause and effect, when I want something to move, the cause is when I push on it and the effect is when it moves. And in the world of new thought and consciousness and in quantum physics, the cause is when I decide that I want it to move. And the primary effect is me pushing on it because I'm inspired to push on it because I want it to move. And the secondary effect is that it starts moving. The reason that naysayers in the pivot are so important is that if I'm looking at a huge object and I decide I want to move that and the little voice says, you can't move that, <laughs> then that's the cause. The cause is my belief that I can't move it. And then you know what's going to happen is I will be unable to move it. Even if I say I really want to move that thing, if I believe I can't move it, then it's done as I believe and I can't move it. Mm -hmm. Once I set the intention that that big object is going to move, all sorts of possibilities open up. And I don't know what kind of a big object it is, but it's possible that if it's a big object that's at the top of a hill, it can just start rolling. Or you can dig out a little bit of the earth under it, and it's going to make it start rolling, and there it goes. Uh, or it could tip over. Or it could turn out that an even bigger object comes along and bumps into it and knocks it over. I mean, there are so many different ways that that object could start moving that when I limit it to it's going to be me pushing on it, that's the only way that it can move, then the universe is going to let me struggle as long as I want to, as long as I believe that it's going to have to be me, and it's going to have to be pushing, and it's never going to move until I somehow can overcome the laws of physics, I get to push as long as I want. Mm. Yeah, yeah. It, it's kind of, it's, it's kind of knowing in the beginning that it can happen, which is what you said, but how it happens, that's another thing because we're used to uh, planning, you know, that's the whole thing. You, you set goals, you plan, and you follow the plan and whatever, and, the, and if it doesn't work out, you look for the errors. And this kind of doesn't totally eliminate the planning, but it kind of makes you understand where the power comes from that makes it happen. Mm -hmm. yeah. You ever think about somebody and then they call you or send oh, yeah. you an email yeah. out of the blue? I mean, it's somebody who you haven't spoken with in months or years. Yeah. And you start thinking about them and the phone rings. Explain that. You know, I don't know how to explain it, but I do it sometimes. I, when I want someone's attention, I'll, <laughs> I, really, <laughs> I know you're going to laugh, but that's the truth. No, I, I understand. believe if it could happen without you knowing that it happens, then it can certainly happen if you set your intention for it to happen. Now, that doesn't mean that I close my eyes and do something wooey and, you know, focus and they call me in 10 minutes. But I can tell you this, beyond a shadow of any doubt, they're going to call. Mm -hmm. They're going to call. Yeah, they're going to call because they wanted to call, not because they got some voodoo curse from you. No, yeah, no, but something left from me and said, you better call her. <laughs> <laughs> and when those happen to people who are just going through their normal course of their lives, they call it a coincidence. And I'm perfectly happy calling all of this stuff a coincidence. I'm going to sit over here and I'm going to do a practical prayer. I'm going to say some words either out loud or in the privacy of my own head, and then something's going to happen in the world. Do I care that I can either explain exactly what I believe the metaphysics of that is, or is it okay with me if the good thing that's showing up in my life just shows up by coincidence? Do I care? No. Uh, I care. Because right. I want to make sure that it happens again. Oh, know? no. I, I, if, if I'm generating the coincidences that are making me happy, and it's just a coincidence that I do a practical prayer for something, and then it shows up, does it make any difference whether I call that me harnessing the creative power in the universe or inspiring a coincidence? Same thing. 
right. that's my thinking. So people who are having all these happy coincidences coming up in their lives are doing exactly the same thing that we're talking about. And if there's a resistance to using the spiritual or metaphysical language that we use, then, okay, there's something in the belief system that says, I don't want to, I don't, I don't want to consider that this is a spiritual context. Fine. It still works. Yeah, it does. But like, hold it a second, you know, if, if you just think that it's coincidence and that you had no part in it and it just happened to you, then that's what, those are people that you meet all the time where just like life has happened. I'm in this situation and life has happened and it just keeps on happening and I have bad luck. You know, you got to put a stake in the ground and say, listen, let's look at how this happened mm -hmm. yeah, and how good. we can make it happen differently. Now, what I find a lot is even getting you to the point to believe that you can make it happen differently. You know, people are very comfortable with the idea that just life happens or excrement happens. <laughs> <laughs> and um, yeah, there you can't, life does happen, but not to the degree that we just sit back and just say, well, I'm just gonna hope and pray for the best. You know, I'm putting my two cents in there uh, with, with some level of knowledge of how this works. And it doesn't just doesn't have to happen that way. Right. I mean, you know, I don't catch everything and I'm not using myself totally as an example, but you can't catch everything because you just can't. But having some understanding of how it works is better than saying it's just going to work like it's not it's not a magic you know i've i've read your book and i've taken your classes and i know it back and forth mm -hmm. and so i can do five backward to one or <laughs> 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 i got and, it right yeah but and, it's and actually, not it's not magic words you know what right I mean? and and what i said before is when we believe that it's just happening by coincidence we are leaving the spiritual context out of it in which case, eventually what will happen is the same thing that happens if we're just doing affirmations and instead of doing a spiritual practice of affirmative prayer or practical prayer or spiritual mind treatment is if there, when I get to something that my ego self, my small self doesn't believe I can do, I don't, I don't have anywhere to go. And when we're doing it as a prayer, we start with our identification of that infinite creative power that creates everything that has created each of us and has created me. So I know that I am that same divine power and presence and I have access to that same creative law. So when I say I am prosperous, it's not just me sitting down here looking at my bank balance claiming I'm prosperous. It's me and God together knowing that I'm prosperous. And putting, putting ourselves on the A-team the e that way is pretty powerful because I may or may not have some financial considerations and concerns, but God doesn't. God knows how to make another galaxy. God knows how to create and do anything. God has infinite resource. So put myself on the team with that divine creative power, and suddenly my belief system gets bigger. Yeah. Because of the, it, because of the and. And it's and that's important. I think it's working with the belief system. You know, there is some intelligence in this this whole process, even though first it's God. You know, it's God all powerful everywhere and all of that. But there is intelligence in that. And we had a comment over here that uh, from Maureen, I think, that would add to this. She said, wouldn't that be taking into consideration of the greater good for all? Um, and, and it seems to be saying that she's saying you, you have to think beyond just the want, but all things concerned. In the big picture, and I've had some some people in my uh, in my community who have been going through some some studies and some transformational work, and some stuff has started to fall apart a little bit in their lives. And it's like, well, what's going on? Why is that happening? Why is it that I, everything seemed like it was getting wonderful, and then I had this setback and this challenge or this illness or this reverse or whatever's going on? It's, what happens is that something needs to shake loose from the status quo in order for something new to come into being. It is completely possible 
for love to be unfolding and the greater good for all to be revealing itself. And there are some people who don't want the greater good for all. There are some people who are approaching this creative process from a place of fear. The fear that if somebody else has something good, that means that I don't have something good. That there's a competitiveness, that there's a, a limitation or a zero sum where in order for me to be a winner, somebody else has to be a loser. So let me go out and make some losers. And when that gets into the world, that directly competes with the notion of greatest good because then there are people who are actively campaigning against it. So it turns out, in my experience, that greatest good generally is a wonderful way to go because it doesn't create any opposition. It's the, it's the least amount of friction. If I am opening myself to my good and knowing that that same good is lifting all the boats, then I'm setting up a possibility for that creative field to be much bigger and much more powerful because I'm now connecting myself with all of the other individuals who want us all to succeed and to prosper. Mm -hmm. and, and so that brings in uh, some other ideas about your, your mindset and how you feel about things, character, for example. You know, and, and all of that's a part of it. Uh, in the old tradition of praying, when you get all that together and, and you discover that you're a wretch undone, <laughs> <laughs> and, and that you, you know, by the time you start praying, you've already decided that you're not worth it and that um, you don't deserve it. And then the greater good kind of even takes a step, a, a step back from that because, my goodness, if I don't think I'm worth it, I'm not, you know, I'm not going to bring other people. Or you don't even think about the greater good in that in that respect. Uh, right. And, and then it comes, there's the thing about, do I have the right in my terrible condition to even ask for such a thing, which is right. the good. You know. If I go into the prayer believing that I don't deserve whatever good it is that I'm looking for and hoping that a power outside of myself will decide that I'm wrong and I do deserve it, well, then the prayer is either for me to not have it or to be wrong. And that really goes against everything that we're about. You know, uh, The idea is to align ourselves with that infinite creative power and, and use it and allow it to work and, and just to work it because it does work. It, a perfect example of, uh, of group consciousness is the Unexpected Income Club. We run that periodically in Newthought, Philadelphia. And people who join the club basically make a commitment to do a practical prayer once a day. And it's a prayer for themselves and for everybody else in the Unexpected Income Club to get joyously receive unexpected income from whatever source. And it's joyously because we don't want it to be things like insurance settlements and inheritances. So we are open to the good showing up and whatever is going to happen. And we're going to include it to be joyous. And we're supporting each other by putting that out for all the members of the group. We don't even need to know who all the group members are because it's one infinite mind. The infinite knows who the members of the group are. And by putting that energy and intention into this universal creative power, the unexpected income stories that show up are just entertaining. Uh, there was a woman in the Beyond Limits class and she's in the Unexpected Income Club, and she got a check in the mail for $165 or something from her insurance company. And it's like, what is this for? And she thought, it was, she thought it was a scam. Like, why is there a check showing up in my house from the insurance? So she called them, and they said, oh yes, there was, uh, you were overbilled uh, for some amount in uh, 2019. <laughs> so, we, so we refunded the money. It's like, that's three years ago. That's three years have gone by. That's completely unexpected. But now that she understands the story, it's completely reasonable. And she could get huffy and say, well, why did it take you so long? But it showed up at exactly the perfect time. I believe that. Yeah. And we think about it as coincidence. But, you know, the reason that I asked you about how long it took you to get from Florida to Philadelphia, because when you pray, it's not always instant. You know, the cause and the effect <laughs> may be like a year or two in between. Oh, there's, there was definitely and, unfolding time in there. Yeah, and I think that has to be taken into consideration. I think that's, you, you have to say that that's okay. Uh, it's, well, you don't have to say it's going to be okay. You just have to deal with it because 
the, the universe works the way the universe is going to work, it's possible for the stuff to happen almost instantaneously. I mean, from the time I started doing the practical prayers for clarity on whether we wanted to move to Philadelphia till the time that we got to Philadelphia was six months. And prior to that, it had been nine and a half years. But it's, it, but when you don't say that it's okay, when you don't go into it with that mindset that the time is going to be whatever it is and that's okay, I think you can be resistant. Oh, yeah. And change your mind or whatever and just get all tangled up and, and not move at all. Um, either the universe is in charge or not. It either works the way it works or it doesn't. Mm -hmm. you know, and, and I think that I'm extremely practical in, in that regard. If this is the way you say it works, and I can line this up with my belief system, then fine. You know, for example, there's something that I was planning to do. I wanted to see this happen, and I thought, okay, I got everything in line, I believe, and that's it. But other things started to occur to me. You know, when this particular thing happens, are you going to take all of this uh, baggage into this nice, new, wonderful situation? Mm -hmm. And if that's the case, you're going to be just as dissatisfied in the wonderful new situation. Um, even though it's wonderful and new, you're going to have the same struggles and whatever. So I backed up and mm -hmm. said, OK, this is what I want. And I recognize to unpack the baggage probably will take some time. Could happen by magic, but I doubt it. So I'm open to that, <laughs> you know? I mean, if it happens by magic, fine, but I don't think so. Yeah. And, and I don't, you know, I'm cool with that. I'm just, I'm just cool with it. If it's gonna take a while, um, let me find some joy with what I'm doing right here. Because I know go. it's gonna happen eventually, unless I change my mind and decide I want something else. Right. And that is all about perfect unfolding and all the pieces fitting together properly. Because I, for example, want to spend a lovely week at the beach, lying out on the beach and listening to the waves and just enjoying my time. Uh, if I have that desire in January, I probably need to either allow some time <laughs> for the beach to become pleasant to lie at, or arrange some other resource so I can go to a beach that's a lot farther south than I was maybe envisioning. So the divine unfolding is the guidance on what's available now, what's available to me, what's the best and highest that can be evolving and unfolding for me, and then let that happen rather than be attached to a specific timetable uh, or a specific experience. If we get ourselves set for the texture, the tone, the flavor of the experience, how we want to feel when we're having that experience, that leaves a lot of elbow room for the creative process to create something that leaves us feeling that way without having to do any of the things that we, we, had, we thought we would have to do in order to get there. Yes. So, you yeah. know, you just, you just talked about one of my favorite ascended masters, Neville Goddard. <laughs> <laughs> I, I'm happy to. Yeah. We're going to do a practical prayer about inviting coincidence so we can just get our, as far away as we need to from the idea that we're doing anything. And we're going to invite some coincidences and understand them as miracles. We'll do that right after a break. You can put practical prayer to work in your life, and Reverend Bill Marcioni can help. He is offering an online class that teaches you to create your own practical prayer in five weekly one-hour sessions. The final hour brings your practical prayer together, anchored in live original music by a notable New Thought musician. Practical prayer is based on the most effective prayers found in religions and spiritual practices all over the world. Use it to deepen ever more fully into the truth of your spiritual nature. It's the core of a transformational spiritual practice that's simple, even if it's not always easy. Reverend Bill is also available for private spiritual counseling prayer sessions. Together, you'll lean into the challenges you've experienced in life and explore the transformation that's possible through practical prayer. He'll uncover old, hidden beliefs and uproot them to make way for the life of your dreams. Everything you need to know is on the website at b-v-light.com. That's b-v-light.com.
You gotta do it one more time. When we come back from those breaks, you don't need to unmute. I don't. Okay. No, it does it automatically, and then you remute yourselves instantly. Okay. <sighs> <laughs> so you want to do the welcome? You're gonna do the whole thing? No, just do the whole do thing. The welcome. welcome back to the. Welcome back to the Practical Prayer Podcast. I'm Carol Lawrence here with Reverend Dr. Bill Marcioni. And you know, I'm eventually going to get this mute unmute thing right when we go. Oh, there's, break. there's no hurry. Yeah. <laughs> there's no hurry. <laughs> um, we're talking about uh, cause and effect. And the question that it brings up for me when I put my teacher hat on is what's the difference between a coincidence and a miracle? Because they feel really different. A coincidence is something that just happened, but a miracle is something amazing that just happened. But the important part is that in neither case can we explain ahead of time how they're going to happen. The how of it is completely beyond our pay grade. The difference between a coincidence and a miracle is the oomph or the impact that they have uh, on the experience we have in life. And when we get ourselves into uh, the groove of being in that experience of cause and effect, of being aware of that infinite creative power that creates everything and that we're part of it, then we are able to set an intention, open an invitation for something wonderful. And by letting go of the details, letting go of thinking that we have to know what those effects are all going to look like, we set our intention. We open ourselves to whatever that feeling is at the end of the whole thing. That's the cause. The cause is that new feeling of success, of harmony, of love, of vitality, of completion, of creativity, of partnership, of romance, of whatever we're looking for, whatever that experience is coming into our lives. And then depending on the level of astoundingness, <laughs> it's either a miracle or a coincidence. So the prayer today is going to be on bringing that newness into life, whether it's a miracle or a coincidence, whether it's something that we consider to be delightful but small or spectacular and big. In the eyes of the infinite creative power that creates galaxies, it's all pretty small. So we can think as big as we want, and we've got a partner that is working on a grand scale. So let us turn our attention away from the details in the world around us, the things that we think we know, the Newtonian physics where we think that the cause is pushing on something and the effect is moving, and turn ourselves to that infinite creative process where the cause is the desire to have that thing be moved into a new location. And in the effects to be whatever that motive force is coming to bear, whether it's us pushing on it or something else happening. And the secondary effect is that it winds up being in exactly the place that we were desirous of it being. And we get to come into that feeling of satisfaction and completion and harmony that everything is in its perfect place. So there are different details for each of us. We can all choose that next new experience that we want to be having, that feeling of success and completion and harmony and love that we are fully expecting to have once that newness is in our lives. So we set that as our intention. That is the invitation. And the infinite creative power that creates everything, that has created galaxies, that has created each of us individually and all of us together, that one source that blossoms forth as everything in creation has expressed itself as each of us as well. The consciousness that we embody is that infinite consciousness in personal form. Our physical beings are that divine, infinite presence taking particular form as us. So all of the good, all of the power, all of the possibility that is available anywhere is available everywhere and is available to each of us. So I now know and affirm and claim that that infinite creative power is creating this newness, this freshness, this transformation in each of our lives in a way that brings about exactly that feeling of joy and success and completion and satisfaction that we're inviting. There is no power in the universe that stands in opposition to, that stands in opposition to this. There is only this one, and it is sharing itself in such a way as to bring this newness about. And it's happening now. It's happening in ways that go beyond what we would consider to be a coincidence. It's happening in a bold, grand, and glorious way that just comes out looking like a miracle. Bringing a smile to our face and joy to our hearts and absolute clarity that love is at hand. And this goodness is unfolding in different ways for each of us, and it's all good. 
Nothing is taken away from anyone. It's good and more good and more good unfolding, and I'm so grateful for it. I'm grateful for this good. I'm grateful for the stories we each get to tell. I'm grateful for the awareness of this creative process and the willingness of each one to be able to surrender doubt, to turn away from the naysaying, to pivot towards those new possibilities, and to invite the infinite to create this newness. This is underway now. And with this feeling of thanks, I speak this word of intention and I release it into that creative law that has always said yes. And I know it once again is responding with a loving and resounding yes. And so it is. So it is. I'm looking forward to the chat stories about the newness coming along. The Practical Prayer Podcast with Reverend Bill Marcioni and Carol Lawrence is a production of BeTheLight.com. Be-the-light.com. Where you can find more information about practical prayer for real results. Our theme is by Music of Wisdom. You can learn about the spiritual community of New Thought Philadelphia with daily guided meditations, weekly celebrations of spirit, and Reverend Bill's classes in practical spirituality at newthoughtphilly.org. You see the mics turn themselves back on. I just have to watch in the beginning. <laughs> <laughs> it's only the when first it's... one. It's only the uh, first one yeah. where, where the numbers come up. Okay. So, so got... I saw a comment. I saw a, a comment by, uh, where'd she go? Oh, Bonnie Morgan Gonzalez. She said, the prayer can only be answered to the level of my beliefs. Absolutely. It yeah. is done unto you as you believe. Yeah. Jesus said that. I think he was right. I'm not passing any judgment on him, but <laughs> it's just my thought. Listen, when, by the way, Bonnie, if you're still there, she's still there? We still uh, on? Yeah, we're still uh, on. Okay. Yeah. So if you're still there, Bonnie, this is like one of those statements that hit you so hard because if it's not happening, you have to only check yourself. Not not yourself in terms of whether you're good or bad, but what you really believe. And, you know, when I did that, I started to, it opened a whole new understanding for me. It's like really simple. This is, and I would say what I'm, what I'm desiring or what I'm asking for is good. It seemed like it lined up, but so what happened? Like I'm standing here, what happened? And it could be that I just went off into, took that detour that said, if I don't really believe that it can happen to the level that I really think, or maybe, or maybe I shouldn't be asking for it because it's too much. (laughs) And I discovered a load of those things that were in my my past that um, I chose, listen, I can't undo all that. I can start over new at this point, but yeah. So she's, if you're still there, you're absolutely correct. Yeah. I agree with that. Yeah. I, I was about to use that same line myself. It's an inside job. It's always an inside job. Yeah. Yeah. Because it's not done unto me as somebody else believes. Now, they can have some influence, and I can certainly give away my power. We can go to the all-you-can-eat buffet, mm-hmm. and I can you know go over and look at everything that's in there, and I say, Carol, what should I have? And then only fill my plate up with the stuff that you tell me to, and then be dissatisfied with what I got. But really... Who, who made that call? Yeah. I get to blame you on not liking my dinner, but it was me. <laughs> <laughs> well, listen, it's how we've been socialized, or uh, Don Miguel Ruiz calls it domestication. Domestication, yeah. yeah. That, that's the whole thing, and especially with women. And I, you know, that doesn't mean that men aren't involved, but uh, I know women best, I think, <laughs> since I've been one all my life. Um, yeah, we're taught in different ways that we shouldn't ask, we shouldn't, this doesn't belong to us, and we don't have rights, and I mean, just a whole slew of stuff. Mm-hmm. And and then you're telling yourself, well, okay, you think you're, you've reached a level of enlightenment when you say, okay, well, I think I should be able to do this, and nobody should be telling me, you know, what's for me and what's not. But it's just not that simple. 
you know, because you got to dig out. You don't know how deep those roots go until you make an effort to go against them. Oh, yeah. How deep the roots is another great metaphor. Yeah. Like you, you start to pull out the tree and it's like, okay, but half the tree is still in the ground there. <laughs> it took, it took out yes. the part that was on the top, but the rest of it is still in there and it's going to mess up the next tree you try and plant until you deal with it. Yeah. So there's always yes. something going on there. All yeah. right. Well, thank you, Carol. Wonderful episode of the Practical Prayer Podcast and the Practical Prayer Podcast live stream broadcast. God, that's a lot to say. Yeah. Okay. Well, I just want to say bye to Bonnie. Thank you, Wayne. Bonnie. Yeah, Wayne, I see all your stuff on there. You know, I got you. <laughs> and <laughs> and who else? Um, There's yeah. a couple of folks on there. And, and we will be back next Monday at 1 o'clock Eastern. Yeah, so y'all hang in there with me because I'm going to put my glasses on to read the thing so I can, you know, get to them a little bit better. But y'all hang okay. in there. See you next time. <laughs>